My name is Nate Dreger. I am the monitor engineer for AWOL Nation. And we're at the Sound Academy in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Right How's yeah. the tour been so far? It's been really good. Um, it feels like it's been long, but it's about three weeks in. So far, with a long way to go, but it's been going well. Um, shows have been really cool. Um, and we've got our rhythm down now, so it's kind of. How many it's, it's pretty easy. I don't even know. We have, <laughs> we have, I think, two weeks until we get a little break, and then another three weeks or so of, of shows. So we're at. Like North America, World Tour? We're playing, uh, we'll be in North America until August, and then uh, we'll go to Europe um, in middle of August, Europe for two weeks, mostly festival dates over there, a few headlining shows. Um, as far as the monitoring situation goes out here, all the band guys, there's five guys in the, five guys in the band, uh, the four musicians are all on ears, and then my lead singer is on wedges and side fills. Uh, so it's a bit of a challenge to mix multiple environments. Um, you know, I can, I tend to, I, I mix off of in-ears, I don't use cue wedges, um, for this gig, it just kind of works out better space-wise and budget-wise. And I, I don't know, Q-Wedge, you're still not really hearing what the artist is hearing out on stage anyway. So I just try to tune the wedges to sound pretty flat and linear so that what I'm hearing in my, in my ears is sort of similar, I guess. And then I ring out the wedges and make sure there's no feedback and, uh, and that. But it's a challenge. I'm just mixing in multiple environments too. You're not really entirely sure what's, can't always be sure what's happening on stage and you can't be out there with him. So kind of run out during sound check and He, he and runs listen. around a lot too. Long. And he, run, he runs around a lot as well. So we've got the side fills um, to really wash the whole stage for him. And then uh, some drum subs under the riser that gives a nice, uh, a nice sort of butt shaker kind of vibe for the drummer and then really wash the stage nicely. So another, another one of the challenges I came across early in the tour was just that our lead singer really is more about, he wants a vibe on stage. And there's no, with no guitar cabinet, no bass cabinet, it was just very sterile and kind of boring on stage. There's none of that feel like you're in a club and none of that just stuff hitting you. So that was a challenge trying to figure out how to give him that as opposed to just a standard monitor mix where you can, yes, you can hear everything, but it's just not, like, nothing's really jumping out and punching you. So that was, that, that took a little doing, a little time. You know, how do you, like, my bass player likes a lot of audience mics, you know, and it's like, may not necessarily be like, a quote unquote good mix, but it puts him in the room and it makes him comfortable and like, and that's, that's really what it's all about, I think, is just making the artist comfortable and with what they're hearing. And you may, you may not like it, but it's, you know, it's not up to me. It's you know, it's what, what they need. So, do the mixes change drastically between each musician? Uh, the mixes between each musician are fairly, fairly similar as far as they're all pretty much a, a pretty, pretty well balanced mix um, with just a little bit more of them um, for the most part. And then song to song, there are very few changes. There's uh, just a few throws that I'll do, a few, a few pushes here and there, but it, it's. It's pretty much a minor changes just throughout the set. So, do you use scenes or is it just throwing? Not doing any scenes on this tour. Um, there's really not that many drastic changes, and I, I'm just not a huge fan of letting the console do stuff. If if I can do, I, I'll use snapshots if there's multiple things that need to happen at the same moment, and obviously I can only do one at a time. Um, but on this, it's it's really. I've got a few things set up on VCAs and some pre-post uh, change-ups that I can just I can just throw a fader up and it'll turn my keyboard player vocal up for everyone at that moment in the song, so I don't have to pop in everybody's mix. Um, and really, it's been simple enough changes that I don't really need snapshots, and that's just a can of worms that can get you in a lot of trouble. You can end up digging things out, or if the set changes from night to night, then maybe a snapshot change that that you had in your next song is not now it's not the next song anymore and you screw it up for everybody else and so it just just leads to trouble if you don't need it so there's a lot of low-end information coming from the guitar player has a lot of octave pedal that he'll use the bass player will play bass and then the keyboard player is playing some bass so sometimes it's very it's very challenging 
cueing into a mix and I'm like, okay, who's, I'm in the bass player's mix, I hear bass. What bass is his bass? What bass is the other? So there's a lot of, a lot of cueing up of individual, the individual channel and then cueing back into the mix and going, okay, that's, now I hear it. Now I know what the keyboard is doing. Now I can hear it in the bass player's mix. I can tell where. Um, so that can be challenging when, when someone says, can I get the bass down or keyboards down? And you listen to a keyboard and it's not a piano. It's, you know, so that, that's, a, that's a challenge sometimes, just figuring out who's playing what. And there's, with uh, our, our keyboard player has got key, keyboards and three different samplers. So it can be, if you hear a sound, it's like, it's gone by the time you you figured out where it came from. So it, it can be, uh, yeah, knowing the songs, and then I'm now learning, you know, what sampler is firing what track. So when I hear when I hear something, then I and when I have a cue that I need to hit, I know where it's coming from. But that's that's always that's a challenge with any anything electronic. Really, is you never know. It's not straightforward where a sound is coming from all the time. Uh, I started doing this when I was in high school and college. I worked in the theater department. I worked in the AV department. Just did whatever. I worked at churches. And I've worked in, I mean, all manner of things. And I think that's the biggest thing is just doing, just doing it. You know, if, if you want to go to college, I suggest going to college for something other than sound. Do get a business degree, get a marketing degree, get a theater degree if that's what you want to do. But the guy would get some sort of practical, a little bit more practical. Not the theater is a practical degree, but and then do work at work a gig, work at your college, work at your high school. Um, that's that's what I tell because that does happen, and I do. That's what I tell everyone. It's just like you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't go get an audio degree, but. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. That was great.